Hello, this is Nick from planetreport.net. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, first of all, let's take a look at the beauty. It's coming up now. Yep, here it is. It's an Asian sheephead's wrasse. How do you think it looks? Hmm, yeah, quite not the most attractive looking fish I've ever seen. <laughs> compared to, say, a beautiful salmon. But never mind, I suppose I can't help the way it looks. But anyway, it has grabbed a lot of attention in the last few days, and that's because it appeared on uh, the BBC, its new natural history series, Blue Planet 2, which is all about the world's oceans, and it's uh, David Attenborough is narrating and leading the programme. And apparently, I didn't see it, to be honest, because I haven't got a TV. But um, this fish seemed to grab all the attention because it was claimed to be, in quotes, transgender. Now, in the media at the moment, transgender is sort of like a... seems to be something that they report a lot about. It never used to be, even just a few years ago, you never really heard anything about it. But anyway... So this fish was um, shown to change from a female to a male. And so I've had been reading up on about this fish and I'm going to tell you a bit about it. Um, first of all, it can grow to a metre in length and its mature weight can be up to 14 kilograms. It lives in cold waters in the Western Pacific around Japan and the Korean Peninsula and it feeds on shellfish and crustaceans. And it's not really fished for its meat um, because its tissue is soft and don't think it sounds very... It doesn't look very tasty, does it? <laughs> if you eat fish, that is. Um, but there's not that much known about it, really, apart from that. And the IUCN have not listed it as um, endangered or anything because they literally haven't got enough data as to how many there is on in the sea. Um so, in terms of spawning, the, the, this, in Japan they've observed them in, in aquariums and they've noticed in, in 1965 there was two Japanese scientists that observed that uh, in this aquarium the strongest male wrasse drove away all the other males and then rose rapidly to the surface with a single female where spawning occurred. Now... Going back to the fact it changes, or it's said to change from um, female to male. Now, the IUCN, who I mentioned about the conservation status, interestingly, one of the things that they say on their site is uh, there's got a f few things they would like to find out more about this fish, because I say there's not much known about it. And one is, it says, number four, information on age and size of sexual maturity and whether or not the species changes sex. So it seems a bit strange that they have that on their site, as though it's not 100% sure that it happens. Um, I did do some Googling, and there didn't seem to be... There was very little information seemed to come up, if at all, about this fish, other than all the news articles about it being transgender. So, after looking into it, um, well, first of all, it does... If... if what the BBC is said to be the case, let's ignore the IUCN, let's assume it changes from um, female to male. Now, how does that happen? It happens because it's actually a hermaphrodite. And this is the dictionary definition of a hermaphrodite. A person or animal having both male and female sex organs or other sexual characteristics, either abnormally, or in the case of some organisms, is the natural condition. So, being a hermaphrodite, it actually has both male and female um, reproduction organs. Now, some fish in the wild, well, some fish can produce sperm and eggs at the same time. And then there's what you call sequential hermaphroditism. Now, this sounds all a bit confusing, so, um, but it actually isn't too complicated. Uh, so sequence, as in it's hermaphrodism, which goes through a process. And um, there's two types. There's one type where the fish begins as a male 
and changes to a female, and that's known as protandrous hermaphrodites. However, the Asian sheep's head wrasse is known as a protogenous hermaphrodite, and that's a type of fish that can change from female to male. And protogeny is the most common form of hermaphroditism in fish in nature, and about 75% of the fish that are hermaphrodites will change from female to male rather than male to female. So I hope that isn't too confusing. Um, so the female protogenous hermaphrodite species, they possess germ cells for both sex organs and in a social situation when there's a need for it to change from female to male, they're somehow capable of suppressing the female reproduction in lieu of the development for male ones. So it all comes down to testosterone and once that's produced in larger amounts this suppresses the female reproduction organs and fuels the development of male sex organs and secondary characteristics. So it does become more like, um, uh, you know, it, it begins to have the features of the male as well as the male sex organs. Um, so that is the Asian sheepheads, sheephead wrasse. <laughs> um, so really, to sum it in summary, yes, it does actually. Well, uh, the IUCN on their site says they they're sort of they've put a spanner in the work sort of thing because they're saying that they haven't. There's no proof of it, but there are plenty of fish that do this. So let's assume that it does. Um, it's then uh, what you, I suppose, the most accurate thing to say. It is a, it is a sequential hermaphrodite. So I hope that's cleared things up. Um, if you like this video, please give it a, a like on YouTube, and um, follow, subscribe to the channel for other videos like this. And also the website is planetreport.net, and the Twitter is twitter.com forward slash planet report net. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.